welcome to our Boxing Day service for those who are all here in person or if you're watching later online. Today, the Reverend Desmond Tutu died and we, we celebrate, we don't mourn his passing, we celebrate the life of a great man of faith. I'm sure at this time of year, we all celebrate those who are no longer with us. Let's join in our worship today with heart and mind and soul and strength as we celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus. I invite you now to either look at the screen or look at your, your order of service. Our call to worship today is a, a shared call. And I'll read my line and then I invite you to read your lines. We share in the words of the prophet Isaiah. A new branch will grow from a stump of a tree to a new king who will come from the family of Jesse. The Spirit rest upon that king. The Spirit will give him wisdom and understanding, guidance and power. The Spirit will teach him to know and respect the Lord. The king will be glad to obey the Lord. He will not judge by the way of things or look or decide by what he hears, but he will judge the poor honestly. He will be fair in all his decisions for the poor of the land. And let us all say together, goodness and fairness will give him strength like a belt round his waist. Amen. And may God bless to us his holy word. Let's join in our, our first carol today as we sing some of the verses of carol number 323, The First Noel.
We hear now the continuation of the Christmas story, and I invite Iris to read us to us from Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 20. Shepherds hear about Jesus. That night, some shepherds were in the fields nearby, watching their sheep. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them. The glory of the Lord was shining around them, and they became very frightened. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I am bringing you good news that will be a great joy to all the people. Today your Saviour was born in the town of David. He is Christ the Lord. This is how you will know him. You will find a baby wrapped in pieces of cloth and lying in a manger. Then a very large group of angels from heaven joined the first angel, praising God and saying, Give glory to God in heaven, and on earth let there be peace among the people who praise God. When the angels left them and went back to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So the shepherds went quickly and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in a feeding trough. When they had seen him, they told what the angels had said about this child. Everyone was amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured these things and continued to think about them. Then the shepherds went back to their sheep, praising God and thanking him for everything they had seen and heard. It had been just as the angel had told them. As in all of the Sundays of Advent, we light our, our Advent wreath today. And since, since Christmas fell yesterday... We're allowed to light our white candle, the red candles to signify Jesus' life, his love, and his loss, the loss of his blood on the cross, the white candle to represent the new life of Christ that has risen on Christmas Day, a life given to all of us. I invite Anne now to lead us in prayer today. Let us pray. On this Boxing Day morning, we celebrate all the wonderful things that you have done throughout time. But we also remember the simple things that you do for each of us personally. We thank you for the friends who encourage us, the unexpected phone call, the beauty of the natural world. We thank you that you reach out to us whatever we might be doing and however we might be feeling. You stand watching, waiting, ready to intervene at just the right time and in just the right way. We thank you, mighty God, for all you have done for us and continue to do for us. Lord, we recall how Elizabeth and Mary supported one another. We thank you for the support that we have received from other people. We pray that we might see opportunities to help and support others. Then, for those things that we can't do, we place those people and situations into your caring hands. Lord, we recall how you came to a forgotten backwater and bring to mind those in our society who are forgotten or marginalised. We pray that governments and individuals will be alert to those needs and will act. Help us not to turn blind eyes on those in need. Lord, we recall that Mary recognised how you were blessing her even though things would not have been easy. We reach out to receive your blessings for ourselves, but also remember those who are not in a place to do that for themselves. Send your blessings, Lord, this day to those who have no shelter other than a shop doorway, those who have no food 
other than the scraps from others' tables, those with no job, those with no hope of a job, those for whom Christmas is not cause for celebration, but just another day of hunger, drought or drudgery. Grant that these prayers, together with the unspoken prayers of our hearts, may bring comfort and healing to all in need. In the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Saviour and Friend. Now let's say together the prayer our Lord Jesus Christ taught us to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, Anne. We join once again in song as our next carol is 313, See in Yonder Manger Low.
Christmas time is a time of story. I may have told this story before. I, I can't remember. I somehow think I have. But it's nice to recall the story of Christmas. Let's recall the story, though, of St. Nicholas of Smyrna. And it answers the question, why do we give gifts? If there'd been children here, I'd have gone round and, and asked them all what their best gifts. But I know that you've got handkerchiefs, socks, and other unmentionables. Let's hear now the story of St. Nicholas. Long ago, in a place called Smyrna, there were three sisters who lived with their father. The family had been wealthy, but it fell on hard times. So one day the sisters stood shivering in the street, waiting for a wedding party to pass. What a couple! The girls dreamed, but they knew they were not wealthy enough to have such a great love match. To make room for the guests, the usher shouted, Make way! Make way! But the girls were not invited. Being so poor and lowly, lowly, there was no dowry. There would be no marriage for them. And so they had to look on at the wedding couple. They got so wet that when they came back to the house, they hung up their stockings to dry by the fire until the fire burnt out that night. There would be no great feast for them tomorrow, for it was cold on the Christ mast. The house was cold and the cupboard was bare. But at the wedding, there was a dance. Many of the rich and the famous of that land had gathered, but there was also a man a man there named Nicholas. He was the priest who had performed at the wedding. Thank you, said a man who came up to him. My mother was ill, and you comforted her. You visited her. You made her sure that she felt cared for. Take this for your work with the poor. And he handed him a large bag of money. Thank you, said a woman. You taught my child well. He was teased at school. He was a slow learner. Take this. And another bag of gold was thrust into his hand. The father of the bride saw Nicholas. Father, he said, you have brought great blessing upon this couple and upon our family. Take this for all your kindness. And so it went on, and Nicholas that night received much gold. Now Nicholas knew of many people in his town who would not be able to celebrate the Christ Mass with food and gifts and warmth in their house. So that night, dressed in his cloak, he climbed on many a roof of the houses of the poor. For in those days, the houses were flat, had flat roofs. He knew the ones in, in need of gold. The father of the house, on hearing some noises, thought that a burglar must be on the roof. But the next morning, when the girls awoke and called shrieks to their father, a miracle! Their stockings were full of gold that had fallen down the chimney. It was enough gold for food and for wood and for much left over. Off to the market went the girls to buy the food. The eldest there saw her bow. But her heart sank, knowing that she did not have enough for a dowry. Her younger sister, on seeing this, gave her her share of the gold. The middle sister said, you must buy a dress 
to be wed. That day on the Christ Mass, they sat down to the best feast that they had had all year, and the father declared that his eldest daughter could have her dowry and be wed. And so it came to pass that each and every year since then, as of now, those who have prospered gave what extra they had to Nicholas, who in secret went round the houses of the children in need. But of course, everyone knew the secret of St. Nicholas in his big cloak on the Christ Mass Eve, filling the stockings hung beneath the chimney. Amen. And may God bless to us all the many gifts that we have received this year, the story of St. Nicholas and how gifts continue to be given. We continue in song with Child in a Manger. Our first passage from Luke's Gospel, Iris read us that wonderful story of the Christmas day, the day of birth. But the Christmas story does not end there. The Christmas story continues. We're going to hear Matthew's account now of what happened after the baby was born. Reading from Matthew chapter 2. Matthew chapter 2, verses 13 to 23. Jesus' parents take him to Egypt. After they left, an angel of the Lord came to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt, because Herod is starting to look for the child so he can kill him. Stay in Egypt until I tell you to return. So Joseph got up and left for Egypt during the night with the child and his mother. And Joseph stayed in Egypt until Herod died. This happened to bring about what the Lord had said through the prophet, I called my son out of Egypt. Herod kills the baby boys. When Herod saw that the wise men had tricked him, he was furious. So he gave an order to kill all the baby boys in Bethlehem and in the surrounding area who were two years old or younger. This was in keeping with the time he learned from the wise men. 
So what God had said through the prophet Jeremiah came true. A voice was heard in Ramah of painful crying and deep sadness, Rachel crying for her children. She refused to be comforted because her children are dead. Joseph and Mary return. After Herod died, an angel of the Lord spoke to Joseph in a dream while he was in Egypt. The angel said, get up, take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel because the people who were trying to kill the child are now dead. So Joseph took the child and his mother and went to Israel. But he heard that Archelaus was now king in Judea since his father Herod had died. So Joseph was afraid to go there. After being warned in a dream, he went to the town of Galilee, to a town called Nazareth, and lived there. And so what God had said through the prophets came true. He will be called a Nazarene. May God add his blessing to his reading of his holy word. The title of my address today is, How Would You Look After the Son of God? What must Joseph and Mary have felt? It was Christmas Day, and the tortoise and the hare were having their usual banter. You know the story of the tortoise and the hare. I can beat you. No, I can beat you. No, I can beat you. Maybe that went on on Christmas Day in many a household this year. What will we play together, said the tortoise and the hare? Will we play Pictionary? Will we play Charades? Will we play Boggle? Or, or, or maybe FIFA 22? No, they challenged one another to a game of darts. Well, the whole forest came to see the sights. And of course, the hare threw incredibly fast. And the tortoise threw very slowly indeed. Well, at the end of the contest, the hare thrashed the tortoise. Because as we all know, tortoise can't play darts. The story of the tortoise and the hare. It's such a well-known story that the minute I mention it, you know the punchline, don't you? Because the punchline is really predictable. In your mind, you're already at the end of the story. Just like the hare in the story, who sits under the tree, sunning himself while the tortoise wins. But what if the ending of the story is turned upside down? What if the ending of the story isn't as you imagined it to be? And so it is with the Christmas story. We know the Christmas story so well. I was saying on, on Christmas Eve, I've been telling this story now for 39 years, maybe even longer. Then the ending sometimes turns out in not what you thought it was going to be. Well, we all know the ending of the Christmas story, don't we? It's Mary and Joseph and all the other characters gathered round the crib and the manger with the angels and the dreams and the shepherds and the wise men and the star and the heavenly host. We love that. We had that in our nativity service a week past and we had that on Christmas Eve. And here we are. Oh, is the nativity scene a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes? Lying in a manger? It's like being at the panto. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, no, it isn't. Because Iris read the first part from Luke, which is that bit I've just outlined. And then she read the next part of the story that Matthew tells. And in that, there's the hard reality of life kicks in. It's the part of the story they don't do in nativity plays because it's quite frankly horrific. The massacre of the innocents. It's the part of the story that, that we don't focus on because we don't want to imagine that that's the end of the story. We want to imagine that that lovely crib scene is the, the finality of the story. But we heard Iris read from Mark's gospel 
and she reads that there are, are more dreams. There are warnings of disaster. There is, as I said, a massacre of children. The wise men and the shepherds, well, they're great characters, aren't they? We love them dearly, but they run away. Mary, Joseph, and the baby become refugees. The story's reality and horror we know is mirrored today. There's a religious songwriter called... Oh, what's happened there? Let's hope the next one comes. Have we lost it? Oh, oh, oh. There we go. There's a, a religious songwriter called Michael Carr, and he writes lovely, lovely songs. And he, he decided to look at the Christmas story from the point of view of Joseph. We often look at it from Mary, or we look at it in, in, in the kind of round. But he thought, what must Joseph have felt during that whole, whole story? And he, he wrote a song which he, he entitled, not uh, surprisingly, Joseph's Song. And here's the words that he, he wrote. Lovely words. How could it be this baby in my arms, sleeping now so peacefully? The Son of God, the angel said, How could it be? Lord, I know he's not my own, not of my flesh, not of my bone. Still, Father, let this baby be the Son of my love. And then he continues in verse 2. Father, show me where I fit into this plan of yours. How can a man be the father to the Son of God? Lord, for all my life I've been a simple carpenter. How can I raise a king? How can I raise a king? He looks so small, his face and his hands so fair. And when he cries, the sun just seems to disappear. And when he laughs, it shines again. How could it be? Aren't these amazingly powerful words? Can you, you think of maybe your own children or children that you know, and you think of that, how can it be that that lovely little creature, we just had a, a new nephew in our family, and I'm sure you've experienced young children. So if we imagine how Joseph must have felt, so it's not just to look at any, any baby and the, the potential the potential for life and the potential that we have to care. And it's not all the finality of the sweet bit of birth. It's the pain of childbirth. It's those endless light nights when the child won't go to sleep. It's those lovely little two-year-old tantrums that we know so well. It's the growing up and all the, the aches and the pains. So Joseph had that with a child, but he also had the thought that this was the Son of God. The Son of God, not a normal child. The Son of God, a Messiah. The Son of God, a child born to be king. What responsibility, and yet what tension he must have felt. The story doesn't end with the birth. The story doesn't end with the, the horrors that we heard at the end of Matthew's version of the story. The story continues. We wrap Christmas in Away in a Manger. We sang that at our nativity service. We wrap Christmas in Good Christian Folk Rejoice. We sang that at our, our Christmas Eve service. We wrap it in once in Royal David City. We, we sang that at one of our Advent services. And we'll end today in the traditional way of, O come, all ye faithful. Because the Christmas story is about when faith comes into the reality of the world. God came into the world as a child. God came into the world as a baby. God came into the world as a saviour in human form. 
So how do we think on that? How do we reflect on that? What emotion do we feel about that today? Just as Joseph must have felt those words, how do I care for the Son of God? We know that Mary and Joseph became refugees. Do we see God in the refugees of today? It's one of the biggest issues of our, our society. We see Jesus as a, as a baby. Children growing up in a world that doesn't have the faith or the church or, or what we had when we growing up, growing up in a world maybe without Jesus. What do they think of when they, see G- when they hear Jesus' name? It's the most common swear word that people use. How is that the saviour of the world? He was a boy, he was a man, trying to help people find God amidst the realities and the horrors of life. And our mission as a church is still to invite people and to help them to find God amidst the realities of their world. And so as Christians today, as we come forth from the Christmas story once again, we have a responsibility, a responsibility in our daily lives, not just on Christmas Day, not just on the endings that are struggles, but in all the challenging times, the annoying times, the frustrating times, the times when the tortoise doesn't win. And we have to reimagine that the hare might have won sometimes. Because our world is sometimes turned upside down. That might be a great challenge to us. But we know that we have that saviour. We look to the crib scene and that tiny baby who came into the world. And the minute he came into the world, he had to flee for his life. The minute he came into the world, he had to go to a foreign country as a refugee. When he came into the world, what must his parents have coped with during that time? The realities of life for all of us are there, but so is our Savior. Amen. May God bless to us the continuing Christmas story. I have a prayer now, and we have slides along with our prayer. Let us join in prayer. Father, as we think of the Holy Family traveling along the road, we think of the shepherds under the stars and the wise men and their camels. We pray for all who are traveling, fleeing persecution, refugees all around the world. We pray for shelter for those living under the stars this year in the troubled spots of the world, in Syria, in Yemen, in Sudan, wherever. Lord, we pray for wisdom for our diplomats and our peacemakers, those tasked with caring and tending to the medical needs of many. Lord, you sent your Son into the world, born in a stable, living a life of an ordinary worker, a carpenter, teaching and directing the people and using the power of his time towards a godly way. Lord, we pray that in a mission of our church, we follow in that godly way. We pray for our leaders, that they may seek peace and justice, guide the decisions of the world through the lens of love. For loving God, you are seen and experienced in the forces of your creation, the winds and the waves and the sky and the heavens and the heavens beyond space. We pray that salvation and rescue come to all those who are coping with the terrible effects of nature. We pray that you take that we take care of your special creation. That we use the riches of our nation to aid those stricken by natural disaster. 
living God. You grew into a man from a tiny baby to be an ever-present reality for us. Watch over us in our everyday lives. Be with us this Christmas time as we celebrate your birth and continue to be part of this marvelous story. As we share our gifts, be with those special to us, remembering those of the past, and we look to the next year of hope and of challenge. This we pray in the Saviour's name. Amen. And now our offerings shall be received. God's blessing upon these offerings. Lord God, we adore thee. Come to worship and lay our lives before thee, giving thanks and praise for our life and faith in Jesus. Let us love thee and our neighbor, and by hearing thy word, grow in faith as we offer ourselves unto thee. Lord, accept these gifts in order that the Saviour's name may be preached and witnessed throughout the world, this and every Christmas. Amen. Good morning, friends. Happy Christmas to you all. And welcome to our service, and a special welcome to anyone sharing in our online service or on the telephone line later today. A recording of the service will be put onto the YouTube channel later this evening. Can I firstly thank Keith for leading our conduct, our conduct of worship, not only today, but throughout the past 12 months. With the words of hope and support that you have given to the congregation, Keith, you have led us into a better place than where we have been. Thank you for that. And I thank Iris and Anne for their contributions to the service this morning. And also to Billy, May and Neil for their contributions in preparing the PowerPoint and the technical side of the service. As you know, over the Christmas period, we are collecting used postage stamps to go to the Pathfinders guide dogs. If you have any, there is a box at the back of the church. If you could leave them in there, please. We're also collecting milk carton tops for the same organisation. As you know, our session clerk is sunning himself at this present time, and he sends me the, the intimations by email, two full pages. But this morning, you're not going to get two full pages. You're all aware of the situation that we are in. And you all know to take care of yourselves. As we worship on this, the last Sunday of 2021, can I, on behalf of the Kirk Session, thank you, the members of this congregation, for continuing to support this church over the past 12 months. It has indeed been a difficult time for us and a difficult time for our community. Your continued support we thank you for. When we next gather, it will be a new year when we worship the Lord in this house. Let us hope and pray that that new year is a better one for each of us and for those who are watching online. Earlier on, Keith lit the white candle, a candle of hope. Let us hope that that hope goes with each one of us through the next year. 
I don't need to give you the instructions on how to enter and leave the church. You're well versed in them. But what I would say in the words of our session clerk, stay calm, stay safe, stay praying, and may God's blessing be with all of us now and forever. Thank you. Thank you, Colin, and, and Colin and others make the church a, a lovely place by all of the, the decorations and the flowers, not just here at Christmas time, but throughout the year. And we give thanks and praise to them for all, the, for all of, of, of their service. Have a very nice day today as we relax after the Christmas celebrations, whether you're going out or just sitting by the fire or finding some old film that you've seen ten times before but you just happen to like. Whatever you're doing today, enjoy. We close our service in a very traditional way as we sing four verses of O Come, All Ye Faithful. now in peace and joy and happiness to love and serve the Lord this day and always.
And we ask for the blessing in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you.